don't know what it was. It has like a spike in the bottom. It used to be a tent pole. Like, oh, right. Right. Um, no. like a circus tent? Yeah, but it's not big. It's only like 12 feet tall, but it had a big iron spike in the bottom. Oh, wow. Like, okay, like that's cool. falling to the ground or something. But, okay. Um, Pretty nice piece of wood or what? I think so. Alright. Some kind of spruce. Oh, yeah. Good Something mass appropriate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a little heavy, but I'm going to take it down, and that's where I need your advice. It, it's got a little bit of a taper to it. Oh, yeah. But, you know, like spar taper, where it starts batting the metal tapered on the end. Yeah. And I want to take it down to just shy of two inches at the top, and maybe two at the bottom. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how do you shape? A spar. Do, can I just use a plane? But there's there's tools, right, that I need to make marks to, you know. Yeah, kind of, sort of. It depends how much you want to take off. I I'd say it's just it's like two and a half. I'd like to bring it down to two. Not a lot, Ooh, okay, but enough okay, that you know. Okay. Enough that it's some amount. So that's like a quarter inch. Yeah, um, I should have brought it with me. Side. I could have shown you. Yeah. Right. I'll take a video for you or something, or oh, just cool. bring it by next time we hang out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, gosh, I don't know, maybe even put Carol's frame on that one. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's straight. Like, you're not trying to change the shape of it, you're just trying to change the size. Take a little bit of weight off, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't even have to be round. Like, I can, what I was going to do is, you know the thing where there's, like, two pencils, yeah. two holes for pencils, and you sort of bring it along, oh, yeah. and yeah, it makes the two line. pencil lines, and then you, yeah. you chalk line it in that area, you know, tape it off, chalk line it, and then you take the plane to it, yeah. and when all that chalk's gone, you, you, it's something like that, right? Like, yeah, usually that's a gauge for eight side then. Right. But that's when you start with a square piece of wood. Which I have not. Which you're already, now if you were going to take a lot off, I'd tell you square, you know, eight, you know, Bring it back to square and, and then inclined to. But it's so little, like you wouldn't even get the square. You wouldn't get the square. Yeah, I would get two eight, eight sides. sides off of exactly. It. If I took yeah. an inch off each side, yeah. it would be eight sided again, and then I would just round it out by eye. Yeah. So that's what I'm inclined to do is basically take off, make it eight sided, go from round to eight sided, and then yeah. just sand it and make it look too ish. Yeah, that would be good enough. Enough. As long as it looks good to the eye, I mean, the yeah. wind doesn't care whether it's... going to have a big red sail on it, I'm not sure you can see it anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, yeah, that's what I do. And then for a masked step, that's, you know, the, the, the shaping, I'll just sort of I'll just endure, right? Like, I'm not really, really kind of where it is. Yeah, just pick up your plane and go at it. But the, the masked step is where I'm... So kind of wrestling with it. Okay. Um, now is this going on the skip? It is. Okay. It is. And so you know how little space I'm working with as it is. Yeah. Your skip has several little idiosyncratic. Um, so is it going where the current mass is stuck in the skip? No. No, it's going. You know, there's the forward mode seat, mm -hmm. there's the mast, and then the forward mode seat, yeah. and then the dagger board. Yeah. And then right behind, right after the dagger board, is that rowing to go the middle forward. Middle middle. Seat. And then yeah. the, the nice seat in the back. Yeah. Um, so, the only, without reconstructing too much and adding stuff, the best I can figure oh. is it has to go somewhere around the rowing seat. Yeah. If it went directly after it, I'd have to build all sorts of structures and shit. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking the rowing seat's already there and it's plenty strong. Yeah. Not by itself, but yeah. what I'm inclined to do, I'll draw a picture. Okay. What I'm inclined to do is Okay, now, so the middle, now, so is this going to be a schooner rig? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you a picture of it. All right. Well. You know I'm not a, a fan of the rules. Exactly. Classic, right, right. traditional, you know, I'm not going to build another boat. I'm going to make this boat a schooner because, well, why not?
Okay, so. My plan is to drill. So the dagger board slopes aft, mm -hmm. right under the thwart. My plan right. is to drill a hole with a hole saw, mm -hmm. two inches wide, you know, a two inch hole in the aft, in the forward portion of that thwart, mm -hmm. and put like an opti mast flange mm -hmm. there, which is two inch, you know, like yeah. it already has the, the cutout, of, it's a poly, um, it's some kind of, you know, plastic, you know, hard, hardened plastic. A polymer. A polymer. polymer yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, like cost, weatherproof. Yeah. So cheap plastic flange. Okay. Plop it in there. Okay. I got half, and then so mast would go through the forward part of that seat. That okay. way, I'm not straddling a mast when I'm rowing. I'm just sort of leaning up against it, which Ooh, is less of an okay. issue. Slightly less of an Slightly issue. Slightly less oh of an gosh. issue. Slightly, maybe kind of. How far does the center board, the dagger board, slope back under the seat? I'd because say you're going to start getting. Like the foot of the mast, if it's too far forward, is going to be landing. Well, that's why I'm thinking of building my step um, somewhere on... Into the dagger board. Into the into dagger the board, end. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because you've got that issue where the dagger board has separated with the seat. You know how You're that's, right, that's already a, a weak spot. Well, I wonder if this is a chance to super beef it up. Perhaps. Um, this may be an excuse to put like a extra brace or an extra bulkhead piece in there possibly yeah because kind of, sort of. i could this is all open whatever if i was oh. going to put it any farther aft i'd have to build a fucking mm. something this is all open yeah it is. this not... might just be a bad idea <laughs> who knows you know wow i could yeah. put it aft all the way aft of the seat but it would be off center and that would be fucking weird I'm not, I'm not doing that. All right. Um, okay. So you see kind of where I'm, yeah, wow. what I'm wrestling with. Putting it somewhere in the thwart is great. And like in terms of rowing space, now, I'd lose a lot of seating there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'd have, let's say the seat's only this wide. I would only have this much to sit on, which is fine. I'll just... Indoor, <laughs> and the mask can just come out. If I want to row for a day, I yeah. can just pull the rig. Yeah, because that's the other option is like you, um, you sort of uh, come to grips with the fact that you won't be able to have the schooner rig up and row from that seat. Not efficiently. Yeah, well, yeah, either not efficiently or not at all. Or Maybe not. not at all is going to be a better situation for the sailing and for the structure. And then you just have to take the mast out to row from that seat. Because you can row from the forward seat. I can. Oh, yeah, but I would need oar locks there. Okay. Oar locks All right. there. Now, With wasn't there just a photo of you rowing in the forward seat or no? No, that's you. Oh, that's me sitting up there. Okay. You're sitting up and there. And the oars are in the lock. So what you got to do is you got to put locks in that front seat. And that solves forward. your problem. And we're good. Because when Susanna's aboard, which, you know, hopefully she, hopefully she is more times than not, so that's the, the front seat is better to row from anyway. So put it's it wherever I want in the aft seat yeah. and just row up front. Put yeah. the weight aft and just... Yeah, and just deal with it or take it out and row for longer distances from the center seat when you're on. I like that. So that's a solution. Mmm, interesting. It'll sit kind of funny, but... Well, if you're rowing from the front seat mm. alone, alone, it will. It'll sit very funny, but hopefully it's just, it's just to get away from the dock. That's, then you shift yeah. to yours and you hop back and you're good to go. It's just, you know, it would only be for like a hundred feet or something. It wouldn't be like you'd row across the harbor from the front seat. I was also going to have a pipe going through the flange into whatever step. My plan was to take a stain, like a pipe and put a screw, like a cap on the bottom and put a bolt or something in that cap and that okay. secure it to the dagger board okay. trunk. Um, so it'll so from starting from the bottom working up bolt little flag pole little flag pole. <laughs> starting from the dagger board up bolt okay. goes to one of those screw on caps to a pipe yeah. the pipe goes up through the so the pipe adds extra support yeah. you know yeah. um, that way I don't I can still make it freestanding though I might not um, but then the mast goes up from there and just sort of does what masts do okay uh, I think it could work. 
Definitely could. Now the one thing you want is where the base of the mast is to where the seat is. You want as much distance there as possible. So you want it as close to the floor as you can get it? Yeah. Because that's the leverage is between wherever the mast ends and the seat. The leverage is going to be... And the seat is already lower so than... Because yeah. your, your other mast... Uh, from, goes it's from the, the is rail. Is at the deck level. Yeah. It's not at the seat level. Now that's the issue that I ran into with the duck punt. Because we're already in a pickle. Yeah. <laughs> before I like quadruple, quadruple framed with like those little gray knees, the yeah. bow section of the duck pond, when I was when it was going to windward in waves, you could feel and see the front end of the boat like racking compared to where you were sitting in the center of the boat. So it was like flexing. That's that's really scary. Yeah. And that was because the mass goes through the seat. It doesn't go through a partner's at rail height, which is, you know, the setup you've got now. So, like, you know, now you're talking about, you've already got stresses in the dagger board area. Now you're talking about, like, quintupling those things. It's, it's a really, it's a bad idea. <laughs> it's a really bad idea. Um, yeah. But like we say, it could be a chance if you if you made this whole thing right to like super beef up that area. Yeah, but like I don't have the tools or the space to do that. It's just I don't think this will be the year. You know, mm -hmm. part of me wants to bring the pram back this year and just have a little rowboat in oh, yeah. the harbor and not be a fucking menace. But oh my gosh. Um, at the same time, I'm like I'm owning it. I, I built I built the mainsail already. It's done, oh, and I have the mast. Oh, and so what I need is I just need some sort of crackpot solution. Yeah, right. To make this work. Uh. What the. one is yours with the uh, cork around it, is that right? Yeah, cork is mine, the empty mug. Dude, nice mug. Thank you. Oh, we can... measuring off something else. That's the problem. The mug is, um... Too, huh? Yeah, preloaded it with oat milk as a like you know I'm not gonna uh, run, drive around with a thing of milk. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, that mug is a it's a relic. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We, you know what we did? What? I fucked up. We used the wrong side. Uh oh. I like how you're including me in this. Yeah. This is, this is, <laughs> Um, no, this is a, is that, yeah, that mug is a World War II relic. Really? Wow. They were made by the Victor Insulation, uh, you know, like they, the company used to make electric insulators. Okay. And then the Navy put out a contract that said, hey, our sailors are klutzes and they keep dropping and breaking mugs because we, you know, we're crashing into waves and stuff. Shit all day. Okay. So they put out a bid to see if there was a company that could make uh, like a basically bulletproof ceramic mug and the Victor Insulator Company in Victor, New York was like, well, okay, we have, we have clay. Mm. And we're already making things that were round with holes in the top and bottom. And they were like, well, let's close off the bottom and uh, put a handle on it. Wow, look at that. That's so, a quality mug there. And that's that's kind of how the diner mug came to be, to my, to my knowledge. Mm. Mm. Oh, look at that, a bosun's mug. An iconic diner mug. Is... Good coffee, too. Thanks. Mm. 
some stuff my brother gave me from Pennsylvania. Some local coffee shop down there. Oh. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, I, like I'm, you know, I love, I love what you're, the experiments and whatnot with the, uh, with the skiff, but like, I mean, we got to get you into a proper vessel one of these days, right? Yeah, but it's getting to the point now where the science experiment can only go so far, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. I get that. Like, if you had something that you could pull an overnight in, like up in the Anaswam River or backside of Cranes Beach down here in Essex or whatever, and then sail back to Gloucester the next day or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that would be kind of... I would like that. Mm. Yeah, something that could dry out so you wouldn't have to leave the low tide. I think you'd want a bit more room than Centennial, a little bit more family friendly, but you know, something of that size and shape anyhow, you know, capability. Where you're not really, you know, you'd not feel nervous at all going offshore, but you'd also be able to pull up onto a mud flat or a you know, back beach or something for an afternoon be ideal. Oh. Oh. Um. Hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't want something ballasted, I don't think, because you'd want to be able to, I don't know, would you want to be able to tow a small boat behind your truck, or would you just like hire someone to all up for you. Good question. These are all very good questions. Yeah. This is, I don't know. It's, um, at this point, I'm still. If the cruising is going to happen with a bigger, uh, bigger boat, that would probably get hauled somewhere. All right. So you go full on like marina type. Yeah. Yeah. I want like. But then, then again, I'm looking at something like a cat boat, which I could easily trailer. Because mm -hmm. okay. they sit in chowder bowls. Okay. As opposed to wine glasses. Interesting. Chowder bowl cat. Yeah, you know, something flat, a little skag. Yeah. yeah. Won't point well anyway, so exactly. why worry about draft? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, interesting. So, yeah, you're you're focused on this summer. You're not so, thinking yeah. about like you know, so three there, seasons from now. If there is like a weird piece of hardware that I can bolt in somewhere, or or you know. Okay, so my immediate thought was, all right, um, so you could put a mast partners on top of that seat. And if the mass partners were wide enough, all right, it could go forward of the seat and brace your centerboard trunk to get rid of your structural issues right there. Right. Okay. Like something something beefy, like three quarter inch ply, uh, or even or even actual wood, like an oak, couple pieces of oak. All right. So if it goes forward, braces your bagger board trunk. And then it's wide enough to sit on comfortably, uh -huh. where it's not just like a protrusion that's, you know, making it uncomfortable to sit. Like, you know, it's not going to, you're not going to be rowing from that seat if there's like just a mast hole there because it'll, it's going to mess with your butt over, you know, like you row for more than an hour and you'll have blisters, you know, around, yeah. you know, wherever there's some sort of irregular. So if it was flat and wide enough to sit and row on, which would be, say, uh, 14 inches wide, say, 
and then it came back and sort of swooped back into a little mass partner just on the back side of that seat. Mm -hmm. Then it could do, you know, it could brace the center board and be a super sturdy mass partner. And you get the amount of height of that part of the thickness of the wood above the seat. So you're actually increasing the height closer to the gunnel. So you're getting better leverage as you go on. Yeah. I could also <sighs> build out a little, a little disc, a little round, mm -hmm. build the seat back, just move the oar locks back. Shifting me collectively back six inches wouldn't make a huge difference, I think. Towards the stern of the boat. Correct. And then you'd put the mast through the front of the things. Yeah, or where, where I was going to put it anyway. It seems less work to move me than it does the Oh, mast. that's interesting. Yeah. Increase the size of the seat. Just, yeah, build out a little board, put yeah. a little post in it. Yeah. Or something like that. And then you could put the mast through the seat that's there. Right there. That's a possibility, and if you can get if you can get the base of the mast down so that it's at the junction of the uh, dagger board box and the floor, and just right out, get it to the floor, then you put get a pipe this, there yeah, for that's added leverage. Oh, that's a possibility too. Easier to move me, I think. It might be. Are there seat risers in that boat, or do they just go right into the sides? The seat, oh, right, to the, the seat sides. Next to the sides. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever it is, you'd have to slap it on. So you can't just drop another seat board in there. No, but you bring it in. You bring up an interesting point. You could stick a couple. What do you call them? Risers. You yeah, said? if you had the riser rails on either side, then you could drop in a temporary seat to rail from. I could too. just drop in a temporary seat. And you could have the sail through the seat. Um, yeah, interesting. I like that. I like that idea. <laughs> Out of work, won't get done by the summer. Oh. Might get done by the summer. Here's hoping. That's what it's all about, That's right? That's what it's all about. It's got to be done for the schooner races at the very least. Yes, well. That's not the summer, though, is it? No. And if or the boat's it? in the water, I can't work on it. I want to get the boat in the water. Yeah. yeah. But there's also, I'm getting married in June. And oh, wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, oh, very nice. And there are four more weddings to attend this year. So, wow. where does one find the time? Wow. Um, oh. It's a lot to juggle. So where is that happening? Um, I'm getting married uh, at the Lynn Anna Swamp. Oh, very cool. Where's Susanna? Susanna wants to get married. So we'll do that. Hello. And then, uh, let's see. The, the live aboard boat thing is, is kind of re, we're reassessing that and realizing that we've accumulated enough stuff. Okay. That it makes sense to start seriously shopping for it. Place to live on land. All right. Something to buy. And that way, because we're going to need a storage unit either way, so why not get one with, you know, water and electric hookups? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can like live in. Yeah, right. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Make it like a dual purpose base of operations slash sail loft slash chandler or something. Like that. Yeah, we're going to get like a house or something. Oh, slash house, okay. <laughs> that's what, yeah, I'm not talking about an actual storage unit. I mean, we're going to oh, get a house. Yes. <laughs> and wow. we're going to, that way, from there, you know, that makes both storage easier. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you it at the house. Like, it's cheaper to buy a boat if it, it, it sucks, but it's cheaper to buy a boat if you buy a house first. Yeah, yeah, right. Then you have a place to work on it and keep it, and, or not put it in the water. Cold, you don't have to live on the boat. Oh my gosh. There's like a bunch of very good reasons. Houses are comfortable. Do you want to be comfortable? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Winterbone John says no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see. Winterbone John says no. 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 Winterbone John says no.
your bum job doesn't make enough to pay the rent. Oh. Like, working on Smooth means you live on Smooth because you don't make enough to live anywhere else. Mm. So, comfortable, oh. I, it, 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 you know, we could call it comfortable, but we could also call it, like, bare necessities, you know, because you can't uh. just... When the boat says, okay, we're done for the season, most of them don't let you stay. Yeah, they kick you out. They kick you out. And they haven't given you enough money to really do anything. Uh, so you got to find work somewhere else, but you have nowhere to live. And so it's just 